Welcome back to Global Mission Snapshots. My guest is Dr. Benjamin Baker, and Dr. Baker works at the Office of Archives, Statistics and Research at the Seventh-day Adventist World Headquarters here in Silver Spring, Maryland. Dr. Baker, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Bradley. Uh, you know, you do a lot of research. You are a historian. But what I love is the mission stories that you uncover from the past. And, and you have a, a terrific story to share with our viewers today. So why don't you go ahead and share that? Thank you, Gary. I'm highlighting two women of extraordinary faith and courage. Born in 1866 in California, Georgia Ann Burris became a Seventh-day Adventist against the will of her parents at age 16. She attended today's Pacific Union College and shortly after graduating, volunteered for mission service in India. At 29 years old, she sailed to the Asian subcontinent in January of 1895. And when she set foot on the bustling dock in Calcutta, became Adventism's first full-time missionary in India. Little did she know that she would soon meet another single woman who was to be the first of her kind. Georgia's first task was to learn Bengali. As she grasped the basics of the language and immersed herself in the culture, she decided to open a school for Hindu girls, which she did the next year in 1896. Upon their request, Georgia also began visiting her students' families at their homes to teach them English from the Bible. One day she visited the home of a family called Biswas. In those days, the houses in India were more like compounds, extended families living together with the men and women in separate quarters. In the Zanana, or the women's quarter, Georgia met a beautiful, bright-eyed girl of 11 named Nani Bala. Burris learned the young girl was already a widow, her husband having died years earlier. An immediate bond developed between the two. The missionary continued to visit the Bizwaz Zanana, teaching the women English from the Bible once a week. At first imperceptible, as the visits continued, Burris could see that the Word of God was taking root in Nanibala's heart. When the other women had lost interest in her Bible teachings, only Nanibala was left. Nanibala expressed to Georgia that she wanted to become a Christian, but was scared of her family's reaction, which she knew would be hostile. Sure enough, when her father found out that Nanibala wanted to convert to Christianity, he forbade his daughter from studying with Georgia. But Georgia and Nanibala continued in secret. When her father found out, he beat her so severely that night, she ran away to Georgia's mission house. To make a long story short, Nanibala returned home when her father promised the missionaries to be tolerant and allow his daughter to practice her new faith. But when Nanibala returned home, her father grabbed her and locked her in a room in the house, swearing he'd murder her if she tried to escape and murder anyone who attempted to free her. Nanibala, at first sobbing to herself, soon dried her tears and pleaded with God not just for escape, but for the opportunity to serve her newfound Savior. It was on Sabbath, a day whose sanctity she had just recently learned of, that her prayers were answered. In those days, homes in India were built on all four sides of an open court, forming a complete enclosure. All throughout the week, workmen had been making repairs on the Biswas' house. At quitting time on Friday evening, they had left a ladder lying in the open court of the enclosure. On Saturday, when she arose from her prayers, Nanabala looked out from her window and spotted the ladder she immediately knew that God had answered her prayer. At midnight, when everyone was sleeping, Nani Bala made her getaway. With the assistance of a sympathetic aunt, she escaped her room and hoisted the heavy ladder against the side of the house. Nimbly climbing it, she pulled herself onto the roof, scurried across it, then leapt down to the street below. By a couple of other miracles, the courageous Nanibala ended up in front of Georgia Burris that night. She had defied family, upbringing, culture, caste, and religion for Jesus. In the coming weeks, 
numberless efforts were made by the Bizwaz family to wrench their little girl away from the Adventist mission. Her mother and grandmother came and with tears begged her to return. A rich woman from another Christian denomination hired by the Bizwazes tried to entice Nanibala with deceit and cunning words and promises of unimaginable comforts to come back to her home. Her father even stationed men at the mission gates to grab his daughter when she walked by. But all to no avail. The 11-year-old widow was baptized in 1895, the first Hindu to convert to Seventh-day Adventism. You know, it's just incomprehensible, an 11-year-old widow. Different world, huh? Back, back. Different world, different time. Uh, what courage for someone so young. And, you know, what I was interested in as you were telling that story, how do you discover these stories? I mean, this was 100 years ago. How, how, I mean, you're the historian, but how do you do it? I work in the archives. Okay. And I, I'm constantly you know, looking in the old boxes and reading the old magazines and the periodicals, and I come across these stories, and I, I, they inspire me so much yeah. that I say I, they'll probably inspire others if I write them and tell them, and, and so that's yeah. how it happens. Well, thanks so much for sharing with us today, Dr. Baker. Appreciate it very much. Uh, the Office of Archives, Statistics and Research, where Dr. Baker uh, works, you can actually go to their website at adventiststatistics.org. That's adventiststatistics.org. And adventistarchives.org. And, and adventistarchives.org. Is it the same website, just a different... Statistics is a different website, but they're all in the same... Uh, together, website. okay. Thank you very much. Next up, we travel from India to the country of Myanmar.